the Danube, a European river. The Volga is longer and the Rhine is of greater economic importance, but no other river flows through 10 countries. 2,845 kilometers from its source within the Black Forest to its Delta Estuary in the Black Sea. The Danube is an historic river and for some time divided the cultures of both East and West. It has been a transport and trading route throughout the millennia, connecting several important cities along its way. Donau Eschengen is the birthplace of the Danube. Its source is situated in the gardens of Furstenberg Castle, in which, on the top of the mother Bar fountain, is her daughter, the young Danube, who points towards the Black Sea. The source of the river crosses the Regal Park, and fish can be seen within the clear water, accompanied by swans, a tranquil scene. And an eagle that is in stark contrast to what is about to unfold. Further on, the small creek unites with the Breg and Briach. From that point on, this river becomes the Danube. From here flows the river that has played a crucial role in the destiny of countless lives. After around 200 kilometers in the valley of the Young Danube, the Danube reaches Ulm, an important center of trade. The Minster of Ulm is a masterpiece of European Gothic rising up 161 meters, its church tower is the highest in the world. The settlement originated in 854 AD. In about 1165, Ulm was given the status of a city and became a free imperial city in 1274. In the 15th century, Ulm was one of the wealthiest cities in Europe. Its prosperity was protected by defensive towers and fortified walls. Its long bourgeois tradition also created the oldest constitution of a German city and a city theatre whose origins date back to bygone days. The Thirty Years' War put an end to the city's stormy development. And from here, the Danube Swabians emigrated. Don River Donauwert is our next destination. Wert is an ancient word for island. Donauwert developed from a fishing settlement on the Vornitz island of Ried, from where the river flows into the Danube. In 877 AD, a bridge was built across the Danube and an intersection of European trade routes was created. At the Reichstag of Augsburg, Emperor Karl IV bestowed the double eagle coat of arms and in 1467, the city received the great liberty letter of Emperor Friedrich III. Market rights and the mint ensured economic progress and the wealth of its citizens. Founded by Stauffer, the city blossomed thanks to its favorable location. The Weltenberger Enger is one of the oldest nature reserves in Bavaria. Excursion boats bring visitors here from Kelheim. The 
the Benedictine Weltenberg Abbey is situated in a sharp loop of the Danube. In the 8th century, the rules of the Benedictine order were adopted and in 932 AD, Weltenberg came into the possession of the Bishop of Regensburg. The church is deliberately kept dim in order to accentuate the dome, side altars and high altar. All around, angels and saints depict religious scenes. The center of the inner dome appears to open up to the sky. However, the painting deceives the eye because in reality, the wooden ceiling is flat. At the front glows the Teatrum Sacrum of the High Altar. A limited view of the dome depicts the principal abbot and a bust of Master Cosima Assam features within the inner edge of the dome. From the banks of the Danube, a pilgrim route leads to a small pilgrimage church. The monastery's brewery was founded in 1050 AD and is the world's oldest brewery. One hundred kilometers on is Regensburg, Germany's medieval wonder, capital of the Bavarian Oberpfalz, and also often described as Italy's most northern city. Much prized in Europe and designated by UNESCO as a unique cultural and historical monument, and also the hometown of Pope Benedict XVI. Its medieval city centre is well preserved. The mighty dome of St. Peter marks the centre of the old town. The impressive Episcopal church stands on the site of a Roman building. And inside, a mystical atmosphere. The facade of the cathedral tells its own story. Statues, gargoyles, reliefs and stained glass windows depict the religious faith of medieval times. A mighty building in the style of French Gothic. Next to the cathedral is the St. Ulrich Church, which was originally the Duke's Chapel. Following the extinction of the Carolingians, Regensburg remained the residence of both emperors and kings, as well as wealthy merchants, who became increasingly influential. This all augmented the city's image and its inevitable prosperity. In the power struggle between both emperor and church, there was another contender the bourgeoisie, immensely rich merchants, comparable with the Fuggers. In 1245, Emperor Friedrich II decreed that the city should govern itself, headed by a mayor. Thus, the free imperial city was born. The ancient town hall is one of the oldest in southern Germany and was built in the 13th century. The city grew and numerous commercial buildings and residential areas were created. However, the eventual 30-year war did not spare Regensburg. Both history and the old town have made Regensburg a World Heritage Site. A few kilometers from Regensburg is the noble temple of Valhalla that is situated on green slopes close to Donaustauf.
It was built at the command of Romantic King Ludwig of Bavaria. Inside the pillared building are 126 busts and commemorative plaques of Germany's cultural heroes, such as Goethe, Kant and Schiller. Valhalla represents the mythology of the ancient Teutons. Following his death, King Ludwig was admitted to the rank of German spirit. A further 150 kilometers downstream, the Danube reaches the bishop's town of Passau and is met by the rivers Inn and Ilz. No sooner had bishops been rewarded with princely power in 1217 than they ordered the construction of the well-fortified Vester Oberhaus on a ridge opposite the old town. From here they had a fine view of the city and the Danube and could therefore observe any threat of hostilities from afar. Both spiritual and temporal power were thus secured for centuries. The prosperity of Bavaria's Venice was due to its production of wine, grain and salt. It was the clergy's most extensive diocese in the German language-speaking part of the region. Many churches and monasteries were built and the money spent in creating religious splendor saw no bounds. Residence Square with the fountain of the Wittelsbacher and the new residence. The stairwell was strongly influenced by the new residence in Würzburg. In 1783, the bishopric of Passau lost each of its Austrian territories. But its splendor remained. As well as the wealth of the bourgeoisie. The dignified town hall dominates Roman Square, close to the Danube Pier. The large city hall has stucco ceilings, historic paintings and precious lead glass windows. At the end of the 19th century, eight buildings were combined and a tower added. Its Venetian appearance characterizes the image of the city. The Danube now becomes a narrow, wooded valley and small villages accompany the river. On the Austrian border, the first lock on the Danube was built at Jochenstein. A natural rock was integrated into the wall of the dam. Eight meters of drop height produce 850 million kilowatt hours. Next, a rocky and wild romantic landscape. We arrive in Schlergen, a tiny location from which a ferry transports hikers and cyclists across the famous river. This is followed by a vault fast of the Danube around two rocky mountains. At one time, robbers blocked the river with chains from one bank to the other and demanded a toll.
50 kilometers and two locks further, we reach Linz. Linz on the Danube. This, the capital of Upper Austria, owes its good fortune to its strategic location at the junction of the Traun. On the main square, an ornately decorated Trinity column marks the spot where the medieval Salt Road reached the market square. The Bartenbergs built the city as a border fortress against the Bavarians. The Jesuits erected the massive Old Cathedral. And the country home became a representative building for gentlemen, knights and clerics. It was built on the site of a Minorites monastery. The magnificent buildings of the old town indicate how trade brought prosperity to its citizens. At the end of the 15th century, Linz had its heyday when Emperor Friedrich III had his residence transferred to the mountain fortress. He also made the city a provincial capital. A popular attraction is a train ride that travels from the main square and crosses the Danube Bridge to the adjacent Purstling Mountain, the city's very own mountain. Linz was once the center of the Western Roman Empire, became an industrial city due to its steelworks, and was eventually designated as a European capital of culture. Milk Monastery majestically towers above the entrance to the Wachau. Here from the former castle of the Babenbergs, the Benedictine order built an imposing monastery palace of the Christian Occident. The imperial wing was created for visits by the imperial court. It now features numerous works of art. The imperial wing ends in the marble hall a festive dining room. A spiral staircase leads to the collegiate church, one of the world's most imposing Baroque churches. Melk Monastery developed into a cultural, economic and spiritual center. From above, we look down at the ruins of Agstein, within the Vakar's Danube Valley. Here lived the barbarous dynasty of Kernring's robber knights. The region's mild climate is ideal for vines and apricots. From the 9th century to 1504, Spitz was a Bavarian enclave located on the Danube that was owned by the Niederalteich Monastery and various cuts. Consecrated to St. Mauritius, the church dates back to late Gothic times. Spitz is picturesquely embedded within its surrounding vineyards. In Roman times, vines were cultivated in this picturesque area due to the region's ideal growing conditions. Weissenkirchen has always been a wine growing center. This row of houses facing the Danube is a splendid sight. In 1531, the local people built a church and defense system as protection against the invading Turks. 
it withstood all hostilities. Suddenly, Dürnstein appears, a small town with a long history and unmistakable appearance. A medieval town whose legend made it famous throughout the world. A renovated Augustinian canon monastery attracts visitors from each corner of the globe. Here, Provost Hieronymus Erbelbacher realized his ideas. Like a Baroque prince, he had the church, burial vaults, chapel and crypt redesigned. Dornstein was a desirable settlement area and provided good protection. In the middle of the 11th century, the Kernrings became the lords of Dornstein and fortified the settlement. Back to the Danube. The Wachau ends in Kremstein. Defensive gates guard the city and its sacred monuments and more than a hundred buildings provide an authentic picture of the Middle Ages. Its churches highlight its former wealth. Further down river are two locks before the gates of Vienna, a place in which both heaven and earth seem to meet. For almost 900 years, Kloster Neuburg Monastery has had a special relationship in the spiritual, sacred and cultural life of Austria. In the 12th century, the Babenbergs under Leopold III moved here from Melk. The architecture of the Kloster Neuburg Monastery dates back to Baroque times and the rule of Emperor Karl VI. In addition to its fine, sacred architecture, the Kloster Neuburg Monastery engages with its worldly side, as can be seen in the Emperor's private rooms. A giant barrel indicates the local viticulture. This splendid monastery has neo-Gothic towers, a Baroque interior adjoining Leopold's chapel and Verduna altar. The Danube's metropolis of Vienna is only 10 kilometers away. An imposing and historic city. Vienna's St. Stephen's Cathedral, one of the most cherished buildings in Austria and also one of the most beautiful Gothic cathedrals in the world. Within the cathedral, the pulpit is an impressive sight and is where Master Anton Pilgrim portrayed himself beneath the steps. The Wiener Neustadt altar is located in the left aisle. In days gone by, a world empire was directed from the Hofburg. The National Library of Father and Son Fischer von Erlach with its beautifully decorated hall and mighty dome is one of the most beautiful in the world. Today the Imperial Chancery Wing contains the former court silver and table chamber. A place of courtly dining culture. The Volksgarten is next to the Hofburg with classical Theseus temple amid the rosy splendor. The city park contains a monument of Johann Strauss, the world famous composer of the waltz.
The Vienna State Opera House enjoys an international reputation and is located on the Ring, the magnificent boulevard that passes around the old town. On the outskirts as a summer residence, the Habsburgs had a huge castle built with a fine park that was designed according to those of Versailles. Royalty from Maria Theresia to Franz Josef and Sisi lived here in amazing splendor. The extensive castle grounds represent a Baroque work of art with Neptune fountain and various figures. And on a hill, the Glorietta that overlooks Vienna. After Vienna, the Danube flows through the Danube Floodplains National Park that extends to the Slovakian border. One of the last large floodplain landscapes in Central Europe, with a remarkable variety of animal and plant species. Over the course of the last centuries, man has increasingly regulated and narrowed what were formerly wild flowing rivers and has consequently changed this natural habitat forever. Life in the Danube floodplain is both colorful and varied. Here, the seasons can be identified in the flora and fauna, although the lifeline of this original landscape continues to be the Danube. Undisturbed natural processes and cycles dictate all life here. And there are no limits to its population. The steady rise and fall of the seasonal water levels repeatedly transforms this natural jungle into a renewed paradise. After a further 15 kilometers, we arrive at the Middle Danube and Bratislava, capital of Slovakia, a city with a long and colorful history. Klavne Nam is its main square, a popular meeting place with a nostalgic atmosphere. The old city hall with its main building, the Jakob Haus, dates back to the 14th century, with three adjoining townhouses. For 250 years, Pozzoni was the capital of Hungary. Then followed the Habsburgs, whose rule was controversial. The primatial palace shows the elaborate taste of Hungary's archbishop. His Jesuit church was built in 1638 as a Protestant church. Small romantic places lead to a Franciscan monastery that is no longer recognizable as a monastery. Most buildings of the old town were built in the 18th century and have a distinctive appearance without monumentality. Trees, statues, cafes and restaurants plus a narrow strip of water 
a compra da Fiat Dolla Novo now, along a lengthy pedestrian boulevard. Today's presidential palace was originally built as a garden palace for Anton Grasilkovich. The Gothic St. Martin's Cathedral is a huge old fortress church that once formed part of the city walls. In the northern section of the old town that was once located in front of the city wall, the Trinitarian Order built one of the most beautiful Baroque churches in the city. Next, and overlooking the castle, the Capuchin Order built a church consecrated to Holy Stephen of Hungary. The huge fortress is the city's largest historic building. From here, everything can be seen. For centuries, Bratislava was a junction of historic trade routes that fused together various cultures. The Danube was their lifeline. Estegom is on the Hungarian border. The river Danube flows onward and situated on a huge rock as a basilica and castle. Above Vitzivaras, a water town, is a mighty cathedral and castle ruins of the Magyar's princes. This Hungarian Rome lives completely in the shadow of the Catholic Church as the center of Hungary and residence of the country's primas. On April the 23rd, 1822, the foundation stone of the basilica was added to earlier church buildings after Vienna's imperial court helped return the city's archbishops back to power. In this church, everything is larger than life, including the pipe organ. particularly well known as the Bakoch Chapel, situated in the left side nave. It is the only work of art of the historic cathedral that has largely survived destruction. Deep beneath the church, the crypt is decorated in Egyptian style. It contains the tombs of several archbishops. The overwhelming panorama is worth the narrow walk on the outside of the dome. Opposite the cathedral are the partially reconstructed remains of a royal palace. Formerly the residence of Hungary's monarchy for around 250 years. Visegrad Castle is situated in Danube Kni. In the 15th century, the Renaissance Palace was built by King Matthias Corvinius on five terraces. Three hundred and fifty rooms decorated with marble and gilded columns, a paradise on earth, as the papal legate once reported. Some of the rooms have been restored and from 1971 the entire facility has been open to the public. The ruins of the High Castle are located at an altitude of 329 meters. From here there's an all-encompassing view of the course of the Danube. The castle's imposing dimension and sturdy construction are still visible. 
The course of the Danube to Budapest is flanked on both sides by low mountain ranges and referred to as the aforementioned Danube Knee. Next, the capital of Hungary, Budapest. Pearl on the Danube, an ancient international city. Welcome to a city whose tumultuous history has resulted in a positive future. High above the banks of the Danube is Buda's Castle Hill with its imposing castle palace. The Matthias Church is a reminder of the founder of the Hungarian state, King Stefan. And the Fischer Bastion leads to a medieval fish market. On the banks of the Danube is situated a water city and a memorial of the Turkish conquest. At the foot of Gerard Mountain, Elizabeth welcomes all and is where the citadel of the Habsburgs once demonstrated their power. Boats travel through the city's old districts. And Pest invites with squares and noble coffee houses. Traditional buildings of the so-called period of promoterism decorate the inner city. And the now fashionable historic buildings in God's Due Court. Adjacent is the Jewish quarter with its great shul. The Café New York is well worth a visit. The Parliament is a major landmark. Its monumentality is also reflected in its interior. A sign of indomitable national pride. St. Stephen's Church radiates greatness and splendor. The State Opera House enjoys an international reputation. And a boulevard leads to Heroes Square and the City Forest. Situated in the middle of the Danube, Margareta's Island is a recreation area. garden, fountains, and miniature train. We end our visit to Budapest in dreamy Obuda. The Paris of the East is a remarkable city. From Budapest, ships travel out into the Hungarian section of the Pannonian Lowland. Due to river regulations, today, Kolokza is situated six kilometers from the Danube. Paprika determines life here, and it even has a museum of its own. Here, the local people's connection with paprika is presented in fine detail. The village museum features peasant costumes with floral embroidery, old furniture, and numerous objects in a reed-covered farmhouse. The women craft artistic fabrics, and pods of paprika are left to hang. The archbishopric was founded in 1002 by Stephen I. There's a Pusta performance in a tzada. Galloping wild horses appear, followed by a short carriage ride and puts to shepherds demonstrate their acrobatic ability. There's a blacksmith's workshop. And 
typical animals of the steppe. In the Tsada, a Putsta tavern, music is played. There's dance and much food and drink. The famous Hungarian temperament has no borders. Now the Danube flows several hundred kilometers as a border river and is named Dunav. The first views of the fortress and old town of Belgrade and entry to the Save estuary. We arrive in the capital of Serbia. From the time of the Romans until the Second World War, the white city on the high plateau was conquered, destroyed and rebuilt countless times. Here meet several ancient trading and hiking trails, and the city is referred to as Gateway to the Balkans. This was also the border between the Habsburg and Osmanian empires. Between Christianity and the Muslim world. Between Occident and Orient. The fortress, towering over both Danube and Save, was the symbol of this conflict, but also the beating heart of the city. Today it's a popular landmark and a much frequented recreation area for the city's inhabitants. Architecturally magnificent buildings can be found in the pedestrian zones and large squares. Western restaurants, hotels, cafes, and shops. Impressive, too, is the Church of San Sava with its white facade and golden cross. Sava, who had lived as a monk on Mount Athos, won independence for Serbia's Orthodox Church. Everywhere is full of joie de vivre and the love of culture and architecture and a desire to forget the conflicts of old. A cathedral of Serbia's Orthodox Church was built and also patriarchy as a visible sign against the Ottoman Empire. Belgrade is reborn. The Danube exits the Pannonian Basin and the South Carpaths become less distant. The river squeezes itself between numerous mountains and citadels and fortresses are witness of its turbulent history. The breathtaking section of the Danube with the narrowing of the Iron Gate is about a hundred kilometers long. The passage is considered to be the most difficult and dangerous in the course of the river. This section always posed a problem for shipping until a dam was constructed which constricted the river by about 40 meters, thereby making the rocks disappear into the riverbed. We pass by a signal station which became a small Orthodox church and the Mraconia Monastery. There's also a petroglyph of Draca King Decebalus.
followed by Emperor Trajan's marble tablet, a reference to the construction of a road within the rock. Following eight years of construction, this Romanian Yugoslavian venture was inaugurated in 1972, the double lock and embankment dam of Dodap 1. 17 villages were flooded and 25,000 people had to be resettled. Electricity is generated here and the Danube is kept well under control. The vessels are either lowered or raised 16 meters and each lock chamber can hold up to 12 ships. The lower course of the Danube begins at a power station. The river once again becomes a border, this time between Romania and Bulgaria, and is where the new Europe bridge connects the two countries. Rus is the largest Bulgarian city on the river and therefore the country's most important port. Often referred to as Little Vienna, this small town is a cultural center in northeastern Bulgaria with an opera house, theater and philharmonic orchestra. The Monument of Liberty decorates the place of liberty surrounded by flower beds, fountains and magnificent buildings. Dating from 1861, the National Theatre is undoubtedly one of the most magnificent buildings of the period of promoterism. The richly decorated Opera House shines out in red And adjacent, down 22 steps, is the low-lying Sveta Troika. With elaborate icons and sacred carvings. The pantheon of the heroes of national revival commemorates several famous Bulgarians. and streets that contain many buildings and churches are reminiscent of a time when free trade on the Danube resulted in much prosperity. The river flows lazily to its final destination. Taltia is the gateway to the Danube Delta, an old port city that has learned to live by tourism. The modern Donau Delta Museum features nature with both fresh and saltwater fish. Most who visit this region come to explore its wild, primeval and water-influenced landscape. The Danube flows into the Black Sea by way of three tributaries. Some Lipovans Traditional believing Orthodox Christians have built their houses on the flats. Particularly surprising are the dunes and forest areas of Letia that are situated on a huge sandbank. A magical forest with exceptional flora, trees that grow in the water, and large sand dunes. The pelican is king of the delta, as swarms of them pop up and down in the water. The Danube ends in the port town of Sulina Delta, in which a cathedral serves as a reminder of liberation from the Turks.
In this natural universe of land and water, which originated almost 10,000 years ago, nearly 3,000 kilometers of river come to an end. This majestic river flows through unique natural landscapes, royal cities, and diverse cultural spaces. The Danube is a multicultural European lifeline, a magnificent waterway that flows through both history and time. <laughs>